but very strong at setting up those engages in the bot side of the map. Yeah, I actually love this pick here for Barrel, and he has been a really flexible player for them. You can go to things like the Spellbook on the support Orn. You can play it pretty aggressively. It's actually fairly strong in all ends if you can land your knockup. And we know how well it scales. The engage, very reliable, post six. If you get to those ultra late game stages, you have the opportunities. But G2 says just because you couldn't do it doesn't mean it's not able to be done. They are going to lock in the Gragas Yasuo. So the great thing about this Yasuo and Rise is that Yasuo, I think, is a very good matchup into the Aurelia, and both Caps and Wonder are happy to play this champion, which means that they can just flex it to get themselves the best possible matchup. But you would imagine that Darmwon are thinking of doing exactly the same thing. And have to see, 20 seconds on the clock is what you have to wait out for. Where are the picks going to go? Can't imagine it will be the Yankos, Zaya, but we'll give them time. This would not be the time for the most creative draft in their history. And instead, it will be the lethal Gragas Yasuo combo in the mid jungle. Mostly where we expected to see this combo coming into the tournament. And now, how much can they get done on this pick? We saw what happens when a Yasuo falls behind, and it will be the Yasuo committed to the mid lane. G2 do need to come out swinging in this game. They really do, but they have the tools to get it done. You have so much setup for this Yasuo. It's not just the Gragas, it's the Nautilus with a point and click ultimate to be able to guarantee that knockoff on someone like the Kai'Sa. Kale, though, a good option to deny this. When you have a team fight with the Kale and the Kai'Sa in it, it essentially has to be the engage onto the Kale herself, or she will always deny that combo with a simple ultimate onto that Kai'Sa. So that late game combo gonna be monstrously strong. You look at these bottom three picks for Dom Juan, you think about late game 5v5, you think about the power there, but G2 has the proactivity, has the ability to make plays and spread the map. And I am just so excited. We have been anticipating this best of five because of how close it is. And we have seen great things from both teams, but now we see comfort across the board. We see Noggery on a big carry that can be played through. We see Caps making a return to Yasuo, one of the champions that internationally he made a name for himself on. And since he's been on G2, this is his first time back on the champion since he's been a part of this roster. So comfort across the board. We're gonna have early game action. Dom 1 versus G2, I cannot win. And Caps is taking a page out of the Shy's book. This is Hail of Blades Yasuo. This is about that 100 to 0 all in. It's not the conquer for these long extended trades. It's the three quick autos and also the cooldown reduction it gives you on the Steel Tempest because of the bonus attack speed granted by this rune. So this is very lane focused. Caps is looking to crush Showmaker. I mean, he's even running the Ignite as well. No teleport available on him. So while it will make him slightly stronger in the side lane, he will not have that global available to him. And you can hear. The TSM. The TSM. I was going to say, I was like, I just came out of that. I was like, <laughs> the crowd, they're alive with the sound of Team Solo Mid or just <laughs> TSM now, I still, suppose. Still undefeated at Worlds. Still <laughs> has to be perfect mentioned. record. Most dominant team in 2019. No one even came close to me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, oh I think it's important always that we look at the jungle matchup. Uh, outside of individual lane discrepancies, this is the catalyst for action that we can't expect to see. And for Canyon to be on this Talia in what could be his final game is huge, because he has been pretty solid on it so far. <laughs> I, th I, I, solid, think it's, I think yeah. it's safe it's to say. It's looking okay, undefeated. I'd say for a novice, yeah, it looks <laughs> yeah. pretty... No, of course, Canyon, very well known for his Talia domestically. You can see undefeated on Worlds. He is very confident on the champion, and by doing, oh, starting on the red buff, it does suggest that he's either going to path towards the bot side um, so that he can grab his blue and then look for a play there, or he can look to try and do a full top side clear, but I feel like that would not be very common uh, for the Talia. Now see exactly how these lands are starting to unfold. Last time G2 played up against the Talia, they were very comfortable contesting the early camps, but this time around it looks like it will be a different story in Nagari. Stepping forward quite far in this matchup, but has to be careful. Those early cooldowns from the Aurelia are quite long. And while the Conqueror, in theory, outvalues the phase rush, Wonder can keep chasing. That's the level two. Look at the damage and really solid performance so far from Nagari. Yeah, this is really good trading from Nagari. When you're playing the Aurelia into Rise matchup, it is very much about the extended trades for Nagari on this Aurelia. If you can get on top, have the Conqueror stack, and be getting those autos off onto the Rise, it is almost always going to be beneficial for you. Whereas the Rise wants these short burst trade windows. And of course, as he gets a few more levels under his belt, Wonder should be able to get in and get out with the power of that phase rush. But Perks and Mickey using that lethal tempo on the bottom side to sustain some wave pressure. 
Canyon, though, is here top lane. Will be spotted out by a good ward. And Gragas is making his way immediately up towards the top lane. He has completed his uh, Predator boots. And Canyon, by doing this full clear top, he's actually in a great position to be able to steal. But notice the mid lane. See that Caps does have priority and can look to roam to assist the Gragas with this uh, with this blue buff invade. But he's not doing it. He doesn't care about it. Gonna be about the smite. <laughs> the stun connects. He will just walk away. Barrel will do a bit of damage, but a good secure from the side of Canyon. Caps, though, now roaming up. Wonder stepping down. Has to be careful. Can't just get burst down with a phase rush now. Procky will be able to zoom away. Body slam can't come in from the side of Yankos. Canyon's in trouble, but right into the waiting arms of Caps. Can dash through and find first blood. And Danwon Gaming now have to be so careful. If they lose anyone else here, that's the body slam flash, but they'll manage to make it out in the end. And we talked about how Caps had the mid lane prior, and I thought that he would use it to come and contest the blue buff. But instead, they set up a collapse onto Canyon. He did not appreciate his mid laner's ability to roam and help him. And while he did have the teleport, Kale at these early levels was not going to offer anything. It's just such a, a disrespectful play when your mid laner is under his turret, when it is this Ignite Yasuo going up against a Kale. Kale really offers very, very little pre-6 in these types of fights. And great, you took away the blue buff, but you gave away first blood. You gave away pressure from your top laner because Nagri also had to flash to escape this, and this has really put what was an early game winning lane for Damwon in, into jeopardy. And the TP is now down, and that's important. You can see his caps cleans up these kills. A good win wall, too, to back this out to make sure the stun does not connect on the rest of the team. And look at that, they're setting up another dive on the top lane. He's caps got double buffs. Blood. No flash on Nagri. Walking him down, dashing through Halo Blades. That's a lot of damage. He's going to grab that one in the end. Yankos! Well, Caps missed his cue. He doesn't <laughs> deserve it. Yankos walks away with the kill. And Canyon, he will be able to steal away the second spawning of Raptors. But I have a fun stat for you both. Caps, so far in this series, spends around 50% of his time in the mid lane. The other 50% of the 3 to 15 minute mark is spent roaming. And we've already seen what happens if you cannot keep this man in the mid lane. He has now been involved in two of G2's early kills, and they now sit with 1,000 gold leads. And once again, we find ourselves in a position discussing how long can Dan Juan respawn, or survive, rather, as we get later and later. Cap still with double buff, should be able to sustain pressure. Boots to a strong early item for Yasuo will make him easy or make it easy for him to weave in and out of the coming trades. Topside should still be okay for Nagari. Early itemization for Wonder doesn't offer a whole lot, but it only gets harder from here if they cannot find any sustainable advantage. Yeah, and the experience disadvantage is going to be meaningful, right? When you do actually fall behind on those levels, if you're not able to get an early six, if you can't threaten these all ins and aggressive trades, then you can't do a lot in this matchup. Caps is here again. He's level yep. 6. Predator, body slam, no flash. flash. He's coming over the wall. Ignite goes down. They're still going to try to finish this one out. Halo Blades goes in. Yankos is going to grab another one on the back of Caps roaming top. And now Nagari has to be careful. Windwall will be here as well. Body slam will be back up. It should be easy. They should be able to point and click this one down. Body slam in, waiting. Waiting that one out. And that should be it. Caps not even going to use the ultimate quite yet. Has to dash out to safety. Nagari's still alive for now. But Yankos on a killing spree. Takes that one with a smite. Four zero six minutes into the game. G2 are punishing the weak early game coming out from Damwon and they are obliterating them in this early stage. 2K is now the gold lead. Barrel has to be careful. Another double daggers, a pull through from the side of Perks could result in a kill. Nuclear now ignited and burning down. Canyon on the bottom side of Barrel. This is massive. Perks, the heal comes up. They're trying to find the kill. Barrel will get one. He'll trade one back in exchange. And Mickey. Barrel. Whoop. Good hook, that's it. Mickey's that's gonna it. get walked down. They're gonna donate this one over to Nuclear. If they can, they should be able to. And Canyon's gonna grab that one. Ooh, poor flash there from Mickey. That that makes the, the setup for a repeat gank a lot easier. And it may be Dom one again with their bottom lane as a way back into this. It was the proactive play from G2 on this bottom side looking for that hook in. But you have to remember the turret damage this early on is so significant. And then Barrel with just a beautiful double knockup, catching Perks with the Ignite on him under the turret. Perks had to heal with the Ignite still active, so got much less out of it. And then Canyon arriving means you can just walk these guys down. And I don't think there was really a need for G2 to push this hard when you've basically just won the game through top lane. You just need to chill and farm. I mean, all I can say on that is Barrel Pog Champ. The man, <laughs> the man played that beautifully. He's often credited as one of the big playmakers of this team. I feel like in the mid game, he is the primary initiator. But while there are advantages in the bot side for Darmon, things are still going poorly in the top side. Nogari actually wins a pretty favorable trade. 
The Romorp out. Showmaker now going to be in trouble. Flashes over the wall. The Body Slam still connects. The Yasuo ult to follow. The Kale ult comes in, but his judgment on Showmakers. He gets cut down, and Yankos now on a rampage. But now look in the bot lane. Dom one setting it for a potential dive, but they don't feel confident. They don't have the wave to do it. So G2 with the mid, uh, or oh, sorry, the jungle support duo roaming around the map looking for picks. We're able to find a kill. Wonder, good back step there to dodge out. Applause duet will not connect, and Wonder now walking into the wave. Knows the ultimate's not there. The Conqueror has been proc, but Nagri still just has to back away. Wonder will not push for anything else, but with no ultimate available, easy for Wonder to walk up and force a favorable trade. And he's just going to be down even more experience. He's losing another wave to the turret. There's another roam coming up here from Caps, and with no teleport available, you're going to be in a situation where you could end up a full level, level and a half down on this rise, and it just gets worse and worse. If you're locked under your turret, you are going to be getting poked away at. You're never going to have any threat of that all in. And Nagari has really been punished in this early game by some of the hubris coming out from Canyon and the rest of his team with these plays that they were trying to make. Cap's looking at Perks right now and saying, so remind me why I wasn't allowed to play this champion again <laughs> all year. The man has been fantastic and picking it into the Kale, the champion that while can trade pretty well against many melee matchups, uh, has not been able to follow or match the early pressure that this Yasuo, with the Halo Blades that you were talking about, Azel, yeah, that he's been able to exert in this early game. And again, he is roaming. This man is, is a jungler, this game. He's not a mid lane. He's got to get himself a frequent fire card or something. Oh, he's double just jungle roaming setup. everywhere. Play going to come through on top side. Easy knock up with the Gragas ult available. Caps is trying to dash through, getting his montage moment. We'll wait for the ult, and that's oh. it. Dominance coming in for G2, and we said in draft, Showmaker needs to be able to match Caps. What happens? Caps gets a favorable matchup, and he makes his presence known. This game is honestly looking like it's it's over. Like they are just running over them. The top side of the map is going to be so far behind that I don't know how Aurelia plays back into this game. It has to be. Barrel finding some incredible engage. It has to be the Kai'Sa and the Kale in the late game because your win condition now, if you're a Dom one, is waiting for so many items to come through. You got no chance in the 1v1. It's one of those situations where you're like, hey guys, we do have a late game. Uh, we can still be relevant. We are scaling, but like, can we get there? And one of the big differences between this game and game one was that G2 could not siege. The Baron, sorry, they sieged the Baron. They couldn't do the Baron because they had no primary tank. But Yasuo changes that, especially with the Nautilus, because the Wind War mitigates a lot of the damage that comes out from Baron. It means that it's actually a lot easier for G2 to not only two-man the Baron with someone like Yasuo, but also just threaten it and start it to force Darmwon into these early fights that they just don't want to be a part of. The good news for Darmwon is they are able to grab a few plates here on the bottom side. The question is, at what cost is G2 move in on top side? We'll be able to secure this Herald. It looks like uncontested as Nagari's already bullied out, already forced into that tower. Stun will connect. Nagari now going to try to commit to the play. Huge trade that Tiamat proc on the backside, making sure he wins out. Darmon doing what they can on the bot side of the map while G2 threaten the mid lane. Yankos is going to solo that Rift Herald, and because the top lane is so low, G2 can now just use this Herald once it's secured to threaten mid. But look at the roam from Barrel. He is alongside Canyon. They want to try and get something back. And this is very high risk. Perks and Mickey, though, going to be in trouble. Instant ult comes out. Good reaction speed from Perks. Look at the play top lane again, though. Here comes Perks. Three man top. knocked back. Easy kill pickup is the Gragas is now 5-0 and 2. Look at Wonder's face in the player cam. He is just laughing, having a great time. He knows what it feels like to be on the other side of this kind of camp. G2 are just ruining Nogari in this game. And it does not get easier. You see Perks and Mickey taking up home in the mid lane. They're happy to push Showmaker out. They know they're not really under any pressure. And if Caps takes to a side lane with this Ignite, with this massive lead that he has built up, he could probably 2v1 the Dawn Gaming bot lane if he plays it right. I feel like we've got to be closing in on one of the biggest pre-15 gold leads that we have seen in the entire tournament. This is a monumental lead. They are nearly 5,000 gold ahead at 12 minutes. That is absurd. Just huge. Just individually, 1,500. <laughs> for Caps Lawn, it's a BF sword. 2200 in the top lane. Ugh. I feel bad for Nogari. The guy, I mean, he was rated so highly on so many people's top 20 lists. He was one of the LCK top laners that coming in, many people had high hopes for. He has a high risk, high reward play style that, while sometimes getting punished, often has fantastic carry performances regardless. And G2 are basically saying, listen, we attacked the bot lane last game, now we're going to invest it all into the top lane. And 
he just isn't getting the, the support needed in order to get through what has been a very rough landing phase. And we checked that goal stat, Zale. Stats team hooked us up. The largest lead in the tournament so far was Danwon Gaming versus Low Key in the plans. It was 8K in their favor. And now they're on the opposite end. This might be second, it might be third, but this is a massive lead in Perks. Well, now in trouble, survives, trades his flash for both alties on the side of Darwin. So Gaming. you can see that the bright side for Darwin is they haven't just lost morale. They recognize that they need to find picks, they still need to try and be proactive, and they utilize the Talia and Orn ultimate to at the very least force a flash out from Perks. A two level advantage for Wonder, but it's not going to be a 1v1 if he tries to force this one. It might turn against him. Barrel, though, now in trouble in the mid lane. It's a split fight across the map. Meanwhile, bot lane, Perks is pushing in three points of action. Wonder will get locked up and taken out. That's going to be big for the side of Don Juan Gaming, but meanwhile, Perks will get uncontested gold on the bottom lane, and there might just be a dive in mid lane. Barrel's going to be in trouble as finally the Herald is used. So Don Juan off successfully finding these picks, but G2 is not slowing down. They're threatening the bot. Knock they found Perks tire. knocked back. A clean play from the side of Don Juan Gaming, grabbing yet another shutdown. That's a 15 plate game from G2. Every turret plate down before oh, 14 wow. minutes. That says everything you need to know about what this early game has looked like. But Darwin not slowing down. They're continually looking for these picks. Caps slightly overextended in the bot lane. He's now going for the fight. This is not the play that you want. This is absolutely not the play that you want. The wind wall sets this entire thing up. If that tornado connects, if they find any knockup, Caps though is going to be in trouble. Forced to flash out to safety, and they will be able to find it. The rest of G2 now on the collapse. Barrel might just be the sacrifice to make sure that Darwin Gaming can come out on top. And suddenly, Darwin are in control. The Talia racing into this river, trying to chase down these two kills. Darwin gaming finding exchange after exchange and now on to the ocean drake but don one for now have the numbers advantage because zaya still hasn't rejoined the fight they flash onto wonder flash from Nagari, but that stun missing is going to be massive phase rush has now been proc the rest of don one gaming have to back off they no longer have control over the pit Steer. perks on the way in don one gaming looks like they will back off dragon resets g2 can take this one if they want to but they will not risk it instead setting their sights on mid lane wave no in the end mickey and yankos will commit to it but props to don one for still successfully finding these picks because the reality is g2 is overextending and over committing a lot on these side lanes and don one are not letting g2 get away with that so even though the gold gap is very big g2 do have this tendency when they have these kind of leads to get a little greedy and i like that we are seeing these punishes come out from don one this is exactly the kind of plays that Dom1 have to make repeatedly throughout the rest of this game if they want to come back. You have to be proactive every time you have those cooldowns up. Every time you have the ultimates available, you need to look for them. Caps just barely not able to kill off Nuggery before that kill ultimate came down. And then they're able to get that pick. They push back Wonder. It is the trade of Barrel here, but you know, Dom1 are making proactive plays, and that really is their only hope in this game, because if you give G2 too much time, they can spread the map, they have two winning side lanes, and they will just bleed you out. And with champions like this that are so flashy, that are so mechanical, G2 always like to say, good movement wins games. And in that exchange, Nagari outmaneuvered Caps. Dodging that tornado was everything. He would have died. And if he can continue to be clutch, if the team can maneuver around him and the plays to come, Dom1 Gaming are not out. Yes, it is still a monumental deficit at this point in the game. But until that Nexus falls, G2 could definitely make the mistakes necessary for Don Juan Gaming to get back. I mean, they're this. playing to win. Look at the CS differential between Nagari is closing a lot. They're going to give him a solo turret gold here. They're trying to find ways. You know, at the sacrifice sometimes of Canyon here, he's not going to be farming as much. He's going to be protecting his laners, trying to get them the opportunity to get strong and maybe make a play. And you can see Yankos is absurdly ahead in this jungle matchup. He has six kills on the Gragas and. With that many early kills, you really do have the potential to 100 to 0 someone squishy, such as Canyon or even Showmaker. You can see that Nuclear does have a gold advantage over Perks and has an experience lead as well. And what we saw in game one was the dive power of the Kale Kaisa combo. So we look at this and we see that if G2 keep making silly mistakes and getting caught out, yep. then Dom1 have a comp and a combo that can come back. But they're not the team to slow down. They are sieging. Here we go. Knockback is there. They forced the alt out early. The Ornault will now connect the wind wall, stopping it in its tracks. Small thing, I actually love the pre-ult there from Kale. As soon as he sees Yankos throw out the Gragas ult, he self-ults so Yasuo can't go in. Wonder now in trouble. They're chasing, they're trying to get out of this. It's not going to be enough. Wonder picked off once again. Canyon on a killing spree. And it's repeated picks onto every G2 member. This Darmon, the fact that they keep finding this and the fact that G2 keep getting punished is really good for the side of Darmon. And I got to give credit to Canyon. His scoreline 3 2 1 might not be the most impressive, but his use of ultimate has been yeah. so consistently clutch. And we've seen this from G2 before. They really suffer against semi globals and globals. 
Uh, Siege, though, taking a mid lane. Perk's going to be there to clear out the wave. Has finished one item, so we'll be able to make quick work of the creeps, but definitely not where he wants to be. He is the one suffering while the rest of his team pulls further and further ahead in some instances. All right, so Damwon have made some good plays to try to scrape their way back in a little bit, but G2's still very much in control. And this is where I want to see G2, from their point of view, establish vision, get into a 1-3-1, be able to create pressure on multiple sides of the map, and spread Dom Juan out. You want to have multiple pushing lanes so that if there is this 3v1 collapse on someone like Wonder, Caps is taking a turret somewhere else. You know, Kaisa is, is getting pressured on her mid turret and things like this. So we need to see G2 slow down a little bit and reestablish themselves on the map. So I think that for G2, Drake is the next best play for them. You'll notice that Wonder has gone back up to top lane and with his TP on cooldown, I imagine that he'll push out another wave and then start looking to group up with his bot side of the map because they know that they can win a 5v5 around Drake. This is an infernal as well. There's a good chance that Darmon will actually look to contest and this is a great opportunity for G2 to just flex the gold advantage that they have. You can see how G2 are pushing up through mid. They're not committing too much vision towards the top side because it's not that important. What they actually care much more about is the bot side vision. And you can see a couple of these wards littered around. They have some on the entrances, one on the blue buff, and they want to try and deny as much vision away from Darwan so that this is an easy uh, Infernal to secure. Ooh, trying to find the body slam flash there will not work. Still forcing the alt out from Showmaker as they don't have vision on caps, so can't guarantee that there won't be a follow-up. Yeah, Showmaker has actually been really good with these ultimates, using them very, very quickly. You want to use the KO ultimate to deny the initial damage, not once you are already low, and that is why he is being so trigger-happy with it. As soon as you see the Gragas engage coming, you have to give over the respect that it could be the Yasuo flying in. G2 group for now, and this is good, as Caps does not have a TP. The Ignite, obviously, more combat power, but as we move later and later in the game, the Kale's teleport may become more valuable as she gets more and more comfortable in the side lane matchups. Perks stepping forward, the rest of G2 now barreling into the mid lane. We might just have ourselves a good old-fashioned 5v5 tussle. Looks like neither team actually wants to kick it off. What both teams are fighting for right now is mid-priority. So Darmwon thought that because they were there first, they could secure it, but of course, G2 with the gold advantage will force Darmwon Gaming back. That means that G2 have easy access into the river, and Dom won their best bet now is to immediately move to top and try and trade this for the top tower. Notice the teleport coming in from Showmaker. He's gonna push in with the wave that he already has, and with Canyon making his way up towards top, Dom won should be able to at least get an objective back in there. I really like this call. You, you can't actually contest when you have no vision on the dragon. You cannot face check this sort of a composition when you're at that big of a deficit, and Mickey getting caught out here. Not very fishing for the kill there. Mickey forced to flash away. What? Yeah, really solid. Once again, these small advantages continuing to stack up in the favor of Don Juan Gaming. It was 6K. It's now almost 5 in the favor of G2. But the longer that they go, the more the scaling will start to benefit them. So the game has definitely slowed down a lot compared to what we saw. I love the fact that Don Juan have successfully found a large number of picks and are doing a great job of keeping the game in a neutral state, making sure that the gold gap doesn't get bigger it just stays the same because they know that they will get to a point where they will be strong enough to win these fights. And uh, all it requires is Nuclear and Showmaker. Those two key points are what will enable Darmwan to come back into this game. And we also have to take note of the fact this is match point for G2, the last remaining European team in the tournament, looking to go to semifinals. This was a team that was expected to challenge for the World Championship. And on the other side, Dalmont not only have to try to collect themselves, scrape their way back into this one, they'd have to win another. The call of the fourth no comes out. They know Mickey is isolated. He's going to try to turn this one back. They're all going in, but Perks still dealing out addition. A decent amount of damage. Canyon, though, he sees the opportunity. Mickey goes golden, but he will just get knocked back and taken down as Nuclear does get the kill in the end. And now the only thing that G2 can do is attack on the side lanes. They do have a wave pushing in top and bot, but down one have plenty of time to react to that, and this all stems from the fact that Mickey used his flash when he was in the river earlier against uh, Nogari, and Down one are able to find another successful punish, but at the very least, G2 can trade back. And this is why G2 want these multiple pushing lanes. So great. You got the kill onto Mickey X. Solid for Dom Juan. But at the same time, you lost waves to the bottom lane turret. You lost your top lane tier 2, as well as minions and experience there. So the gold certainly going in the favor of G2 off this overall play. And when you have the stronger individual pieces, it's so powerful to play out the game in this manner because Dom Juan cannot answer you in even numbers. They need to send multiple members 
to answer one person, to try to threaten for that kill. And that's where G2 can really pick you apart. And to make matters even worse for Damwon, let's say you send one or maybe two people to go and deal with the Yasuo or the Ryze in a side lane. Fun fact, G2 do not need them to do Baron. They only need Gragas Zaya or Gragas Yasuo. That combo is enough to secure this objective. So Damwon have to make sure they maintain vision control around this objective at the risk of G2 sneaking it away. Wonder though now potentially in trouble. Nagari showing bot lane. Once Nuclear shows two, this could just be the start of the Baron for the side of G2. Wonder now trying to outplay the Realm Orb. He's come out, he's flashing out, he's dashing out to safety. Fancy footwork coming in from Wonder to keep himself alive. Look at the, the Baron now in the sights of G2. Will they start this one as Wonder retreats? Don't think Mickey can solo it. Yeah. So, uh, I think <laughs> so we're I good. thought that Gragas was in the pit as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely my bad. Here we go from Caps though. I'm not going to say you didn't bait me, but Barrel may <laughs> also <laughs> have been baited. Nope, no commitment there. What's definitely my bad. How strong is this Nautilus? <laughs> I was looking at it, I and mean, I was just like, oh, he must be standing over the other characters. But no, he wasn't. Zai was back in base. Uh, that was just Wonder overextending it yeah. a little bit there. I like the side lane attack from Damwon. Very similar strat to what we saw against the Kale in game one. But now they are actually starting this one off. I think they should have been spotted by that ward. So we'll yep. see if Damwon can do anything about it. Even if you know they're on it, it is dangerous to contest. But G2 do pull back. And so critical in that side lane that Wonder was actually able to sidestep the stun. Because if you land the stun, you apply the plasma, and Nuclear could have joined immediately, and that would have been a kill on Wonder. But G2, right back onto the Baron here. Dom one, our group four, but Nagari's not here. Lockdown is there, and Mickey now taking out. That's the call of the Forge God. The wind wall comes out to deny the follow-up engage. It denies the wall as well, so G2 will be able to find the disengage. Does Caps to go in here? Perks drawing the attention. Ooh, the judgment Dom used. Dom one needs to disengage. Kale ult's down on your support. You want to back off. Just push out mid lane here. They have mid lane control, so you got one kill. You dissuaded the Baron. Shove up mid lane. Try to take this turret. Dom one. They are only now at a 4k gold deficit with a turret being taken here. They're going to close the gap a little bit more. And G2. Tornado. Ooh, Cap's good flash from nuclear there. Barrel now has to run for the hills. Yankos goes in, looks for a little bit more. Barrel not going to get taken down quite yet. Chilling Smite has been used, but Nagari to the backside could be everything that they need. Perks though pulling back. Nagari not far enough ahead to find that play. And Perks flashes in, lands the auto. Nuclear in trouble. Tornado, he has to sidestep it. He has to sidestep it, but he won't give him the chance. Caps does not risk anything. Will sweep in with the sweeping blade and find that kill. And all five members of G2 are now alive. They can make a beeline straight towards the Baron. Can Canyon steal the Baron away, or could this be the demise for Darwin? G2 should never even give him the chance. Mickey sees him on a ward. Mickey just needs to beeline straight towards Canyon. It's your only job here as the support. Keep that smite away. Showmaker knocked up and now knocked out. He has no wall, and the entire team knows that they're going to finish him off. Canyon now running, but he's going forward. Mickey going to hook into a wall. <laughs> But it will not matter. They don't find the jungle kill, but they've gotten just about every other advantage. He flashed right and hooked into a wall. Doesn't matter. Canyon running for his life right now. G2 have secured the Baron. They're going to go catch the wave in top. They can either look to reset as Tom one look for a fight. They want to find it. Mickey going to get pulled to the wall. The Spider-Man comes out. Perks now has to try to make it out to safety. Caps. Now retreating, a big shutdown. Gonna take away at least one Baron buff as Mickey runs. They can get Mickey too, he's cut off. If you take that long angle, Nuggery will catch up to you. Moby Boots proccing now. Uh, Nuggery's gonna be able to grab that one. The stun connects, he just continues to spider not his way to run, safety. Get, run. Channeling the back! No! 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 Oh. Okay! Will not make it out. Two clean pickoffs for the side of Dom Juan Gaming, but it does mean that they will give up the Infernal after the Baron goes down for G2. Wow, this is definitely not a clean game from G2, but thanks to the massive early game advantage, which from the top side of the map was beautifully played. It's giving them enough of a berth to make these mistakes. And they are 6,000 plus gold ahead. Double Infernal ahead. They have the Baron buff on three members. G2 are poised to close out this game. And yes, it has not been the cleanest, but it, the individual mechanics are shining through, right? This is a play where they are in a 4v5. They have no support here with them, and they look for the engage. They have confidence in their ability, in their individual skill, that they can take these sorts of fights and just straight up outplay their opponents. And the biggest thing was you mentioned it, Azale, the fight before the Kale ultimate was gone, which means that it's a lot easier for G2 to commit onto a single member and chase them down because now there are no more disengage tools. With all these flashes being burnt and considering the caps, just look at how much damage he did with a single Q. 
G2 is just so strong. All the money sits on the mid laner for G2, and he's a large part of why G2 are about to make their way towards the semifinal if they can close out this game. For Damwon now, though, it's all eggs in the nuclear basket. This guy got the shutdown on perks. He is extremely strong on the Kai'Sa, and you still do have the Kale Kai'Sa combo. It has to be perfect if they're going to have a chance in these fights. Hoping to bait out a wind wall before a fight kicks off. Will perks. Not in the area. Realm Orb will take Perks out to safety and into the top lane. Good use of the ultimate there. Perks starting to heal up. Nagri, though, stepping forward. Cap stunned up for now. Wall coming in. They're trying to group them in. They want the full 5v5. Perks on the opposite side of the wall. Maybe not where they want to be. Wonder coming down off to the side, but Dawan Gaming do not want to risk anything on fully committing there. So G2 playing through two lanes right now, mainly because Caps does not have teleport, remember. They haven't successfully broken into the base yet. We're seeing Darmwon hold the line, and G2 probably going to have to rely on securing another Baron before they can actually end this game. You are seeing some of the experience advantages really show through, though. Two levels up for perks, two levels up for Caps. A lot of these lanes, because Damwon is constantly being forced to group. They can't match in even numbers, so you fall further and further behind. And now G2 playing through three lanes. You can see Caps, Perks, down in that bottom lane. Going to be knocking down another turret here and extending this gold lead further. We'll connect. Let's go to the ulti coming in, forcing the ulti out on the opposite side for Kale. Caps has to be careful. Windwall now coming out. He needs to make his way out to safety. Ulti goes in for Nagari. They're losing Caps their can't find the knock. He should be able to find at least one. No, everyone sidesteps. And now Caps is in trouble. The flash forward. They will find the kill. But meanwhile, on the bottom side, the base is falling as two will be picked up. Yankos on the retreat. But the inhibitor has already dropped. Yankos will body slam over the wall. And now Mickey finds himself in a very familiar position. Once again, <laughs> he will not be able to escape. I respect the attempt. G2. Yankos now stepping forward, though. Well. What's he waiting for? Realm, Realm Warp. Warp. Wonder and Perks are on the way in. Barrel's going to be in trouble. Ken coming down, though. G2, if they overstay for too long, it might give Don one the Jamie. No, that's the body slam flash. An instant shutdown. Nagari going to get taken out by the side of Perks. Nuclear's Barrel coming, goes in. Massive. That's going to be everything that they wanted. Everything they could hope for. Nuclear now free to deal damage. Jamie was running for his oh, life. Look Wonder's splitting attention. He split his attention. He couldn't decide where to go, and that might cost them everything. Nuclear, it's not going to be enough. Goes Golden, but it's a long, slow goodbye. For G2 Esports. Caps is respawning, but the teleport is coming through from Wonder. He doesn't have the Baron, but with these death timers, G2 may be able to take the series right now. And here we go, the final moments. Wonder looking to close the game. It may not have been the cleanest series, but it certainly was a G2 series. And as they move in and as they close the game, they will knock. Don Juan Gaming out of the tournament, and G2 will move on to the semifinals for the MSI rematch versus SKT, the last of the LCK versus the last of the LEC. The last hope of Europe standing strong here today. It was a tightly contested series, but G2 coming out on top, looking dominant in that final game. And what a performance. Game one, we saw some crisp, clean League of Legends from the side of G2. In game two, Dom one fought back. But for me, the biggest difference maker in this whole series was the mid laners. Caps has a history when it comes to performing internationally of not being able to stack up against some of the best mid laners in the world. But today, he took his pressure everywhere, constantly roaming, constantly getting lane leads, and he will help G2 move on to the semi-finals. Madrid is alive with the chance for G2. Fantastic 3-1 finish in the end. And you can see heartbreak on the face of Don Juan Gaming. Still a fantastic first year for this team, but nonetheless, it does not make it hurt any less for them in this exact moment. And what an exciting rest of the tournament we are now left with. Three regions still standing. LEC, LCK, LPL. The crowd so heavily behind G2 today. It really was that sixth man. You could hear the chants throughout each and every game. Shock support's coming on the stage, getting ready for an interview. And it looks like Perks. Quick hug 